<laughs> yes, I am. Hi, this is Lauren Quick. Uh, that was Jamie. Sorry, Jamie. Um, we are here with Gian Andrea of Macadamia Professional, and we're talking a little bit about this new ad campaign. It's beautiful. We have his whole portfolio here. It's huge and impressive. Um, so I'm going to give you over to Jamie and Gian Andrea. So we were just talking before about how the 2016 advertising campaign is different than the 2015. Can you explain what's new with the 2016 campaign? Yes, hi. <laughs> Hello everybody. Well, this is the new campaign. This is where we're going for 2016. Like I was telling, it's important to start breaking your barrier, you know, and feel courageous to do something new. This is not that crazy news, just that we, when I, we left the studio, we went on location, we created a new image that is edgy, is modern, you know, yes, about being courageous for that, you know, to create new looks, to create new momentum, also in advertising, you have to be, you know, you have to break barriers, you have to go to the brink a little bit, you know, create newer edgy looks. We still do a lot of, you know, beautiful shine and choppy bangs and straight line, but also we are working still with beautiful, the Macadamia professional, beautiful, you know, taming curls for beautiful, incredible, voluminous girls. Like you see, I still, I love the playfulness for these new advertisements because the hair, you know, it has to be alive. And there's gotta be fun in it. Hair is fun. Hair is not like about being, you know, conservative. I didn't become an hairstylist because it was, you know, conservative. So yeah, definitely this amazing. But of course, yeah, you know, we went into a more beautiful, luxurious finishing of hair big waves, lots of volume, by the pool, glamour by the pool, you know, and then here, you know, still more glamour by the pool, basically it was like, I'm going to create some fun part where it's glamour by the pool and just beautiful element of, especially the desert, when you work in the desert, the hair becomes so spectacular, the light is incredible, like you said, it's very dry, so it's very good, you're always going to have a good hair day, but that's why we use a lot of oils, you know, the nourishing oils, the macadamia nourishing oils are also great, and here, same thing, more glamour by the pool, but also very edgy and cool evening shots at sunset, this is where I play a lot of my new, um, this is a lot of my new texture techniques, where I use combination of flat irons and big round irons, where I stretch the hair, but I create ample volume around the face and just manipulate it in a little bit for a multi-dimensional feel overall, you know. Right, and the light catches it in so many different places. It's really beautiful. Yes, it's that evening light. Of course, we gave it a little bit of a pop in the front, so we make it, a, you know, more modern, more 2016. You know, right now it's all about there is a sense of new glam coming up, also in fashion and hair. You feel it. I mean, not only I feel it, I want to propose it you know, to the consumer. Enough with the safe things, you know. It's time to really do something. What What inspires like these sort of styles? Like, where do you get your ideas to create this look with different tools and different textures? Well, yeah, you know, with, in a hairstyle, there's always a progression. You never quite use the tool the same way. If you use this, you know, the tool the same way, it means that uh, you know you learn one technique, you su you satisfy with it. Unfortunately, I'm never satisfied. That's one of my things. That's why I, I progress and I try different type of techniques and I change techniques. And it doesn't mean because it was invented by somebody five years ago that is gonna stay and live for another five. Because usually I come around and I'll make another one that's gonna live. I don't know, a year or two years, and then it goes a wash, you know, like we use all these little eight set clips. Where are they now? <laughs> <laughs> Could you predict what sort of trends might be happening, let's say, this fall or even 2017? As far as Absolutely. I mean, you can, um, one great indicator is also in the color department. You see how much more colorful colors have become, you know, we really, a lot of young girls are, you know, they're doing like multicolor, rainbow colors, they're going green, blue, pink, already that's a great indication of where actually my generation was in the 80s. For us it was extremely new, we broke the mold of the, of the 70s and created a whole new movement. And I'm very excited because it kind of takes me back a little bit and it re inspired and reignited my way to see what's going to happen next. If this is happening, that means there is 
more things in the making. There are going to be different type of looks, more edgy looks. Of course, we've seen straight lines like this, but I see more like razor chopped out cuts. Uh, I, actually, last year I, I cut, I did five of those haircuts, you know, Kristen Stewart, Jessica Alba, Sharon Stone, and Christina Aguilera. I gave them all really cool and razor down haircuts. So there is a sense of like edgier, more rock and roll, shabby, choppy bangs, also like the way that I do it here. Um, and yes, and also beautiful, still beautiful long hair as well. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of that really at play as well. Right. And I imagine for you as an artist, just the ability that everybody's embracing this creativity now. I'm sure it's so much fun oh for man, you. It's a whole new generation in play. I don't know if you feel, I mean, you are, you belong to this moment. <laughs> so, what's important, once you belong to this moment, you see it, it's happening right now. I feel the generation before, they were, but they were still connected to a little bit of the, the older ways. It happens. There are decades that are just not as exciting. Unfortunately, I feel the past one was not as exciting. It was great. It was a little more classy. It was a little more things. But to me, it's always about rebelling and breaking the mold and creating new things. So I feel that the now generation is really um, taking all the fun stuff that happened in the past 30, 40 years and just splashing it all back out into our faces. And I love that. Could you ever see like Creative Color being in sort of an advertisement thing? Like yes, uh, you know, funny enough, I did an advertising for um, for Seven for All Mankind Jeans, mm -hmm. and we hired Chloe Norgard. You know, Chloe. Yeah. She was one of the very first one who had a multi-color. You talk always, about always all of the colors. colors. She had it all. And I was so excited. You know, like I go there and said the Chloe is going to be there, supermodel, mm -hmm. cool advertising. And they shot in black and white. Such a disappointment. What color was her hair at the time? Everything, everything. It was green, it was blue, it was black, lavender, it was pink. Constantly, constantly. Oh, so, you know, that's disappointed. But yes, she was definitely one of the first uh, pathfinder mm -hmm. leaders mm -hmm. in that department. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's it for the, for the colors. And, you just came off Fashion Week, right? Yes, I uh, just finished yeah. Fashion Week. It was um, incredible. And tell us a little bit about what you did because it was really cool. Well, thank you. Cool. This year, um, then again, breaking the mold and doing things unconventionally. It was a pure collaboration between uh, Meme Academia, you know, great sponsor and their creative director as well. And they connected me with Nicolas K. And this, um, this collaboration is incredible because I have an amazing brand behind. I have a purely creative fashion designer at Fashion Week New York, and then I have my old fashion background. I've been working in shows since I was 18 years old. I've done quite a few between New York, Paris, and Milan in my years. And this return to for a newer generation, doing things that are a little bit more creative. I basically uh, we sat down and what we're we gonna do. We had a really breakout moment last year. I created this. Uh, they called it the Bunny Tail about it. anyway it was copied on six other shows between Milan and Paris by major major designers so this year we also wanted to you know, inspire her again you know because she's the first show of profession week so we decided actually to do a middle part super slick but then wrap the hair around the chin from left to right and tie it in a ponytail right here by the jawline and make a bun make a little messy bun and put a comb right through it and uh, we did a few tries and then all of a sudden we're like, wow, this could be it. Is it? This could be it? Could be it? Yeah. And we say, okay, great, let's do it. And uh, we made the morning off. I went through 38 models, of course, with an amazing team of assistants and all the beautiful Macadamia products because everything was very shiny, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, the girls walked out and the chairs fell over. And I also made the New York Post. <laughs> <laughs> a fashion do that was the next day in the New York Post. But that's that's how impactful it was this uh, this year. Where did you come up with that idea to wrap the hair? Well the combination was like the designer was like, should we do something under the chin? And I told her, yes, I've done in the past under the chin looks for editorial. But this must have been maybe 10, 12 years ago. And all of a sudden I it was reignited, I'm like, yes. You know, I get excited, I'm like, yes, let's do it again. And um so we did it, but she kind of like it a little 
bowing like this, but I brought a little more up that it almost became, it really framed the face because this side wasn't pulled back. It just really frayed the jawline and dropped right under the chin. And then this other part came out. Even when it was in a ponytail right here sticking out, it was kind of weird and, and cool. But then, of course, that you know, we realized that it was a little too much, and we went back to the original idea of the of the messy bun with the comb, with a beautiful, very architectural comb designed by a famous artist. So, with an, with an everyday client sitting in your chair, you probably would not put hair under their chin like that, or or maybe you would. But we talk a lot about. Well, maybe you would. Maybe you would. Uh, we talk a lot about you know interpreting runway looks. Or yes. the more average standard client. What what of that style do you think you would pull to try to interpret into a more everyday look? Well, the under the chin hair, of course. You know, if you go out on a Saturday night and you want to make a bold statement for a few hours, after a while it will it will start to bother you. The girls at the show were beginning to be like, oh my god, this is like kind of weird. So it's like to have a beard. But uh, there's a way to interpret, uh, you know, fashion looks and that kind of thing onto the everyday life. There is, uh, I think that you can always keep the right element of uh, the modernity and edginess of the look and maybe, you know, sacrifice more in the grandiosity of if, it, if the idea is very grandiose, like the one I did was, you know, it, it just. It was almost like a little sculpture that lived, you know, for an hour. That was the life that it had. But when you do, it depends what you're doing. Because if you go out, you should be excited. You should be excited. You should do things and should not play safe because playing it safe is very boring. Uh, it's not exciting, you know. I'm not saying you have to create controversy, but you should be bold and should have a really find your individualistic style. And what I think, like right now for 2016, and also in a social environment, I see that people are very much more than ever in an individualistic culture. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's, it's like what you said before with like the 80s. Yeah. Like that's what the 80s Definitely. are all about with like punk and all that yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wave and I mean, it was mm. just endless. There was so many right. variations of that. That's yeah. why I'm so curious to see like, because there was all those different waves of individual individuality back in the yeah. 80s, I'm curious to see like what it is for now. If there's going to be different different sorts of waves like there was back then. I think there will be. There will be because, um, like I say, the, the new the youth culture right now is much more dynamic. There, are, well, there is a couple of things that are unfortunate because. Creating trends, they, they only have so much life because now you have social media. Everything so when things you've seen is picked up very fast, it has an intensity but also a short span of life. While before trends lasted a little longer because it was word of mouth. Oh my god, did you hear about London? Everybody's going to London. What's going on in London? You didn't know unless you went to London or New York in the 80s and early 90s to find out what the hell was going on there. You couldn't find out on your phone. So that's a little bit of the handicap of newer society. But there is definitely the drive. Like I said, the newer generation have that drive again, have the fire. Because they want to do things different. They want. To, they don't want to look like their mom. They don't want to look like their mom's friend or their father's friend. Or they don't want the baggy pants. They want the tight pants with pointy shoes. They want the hair pink. You know, because they don't want to look like that. I didn't want to look like my sister, and she's only five years older than me. You know, she was. She had baggy pants, and she was into very wide and disco and John Travolta. And you know, I. I had tiny pants. <laughs> I have pointy shoes with tiger print on front. <laughs> I had a short jacket like yours. Yeah. This is you from know? London, actually. Yeah, it's, uh, but you know, it's um, that's how it is. That's how it, and that, and I'm a great believer in youth culture because I got to live in a decade where it was amazing like that. I miss it, seeing it, and one thing that I see right now, I see a new revolution. And I, and I can sense it. That's why I'm so I'm very excited. Yeah, it's gonna. It's very exciting. Very, I'm very excited, excited to see like what the next year and next few years holds. Yeah. Even for something like this and your magazine covers and beyond. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.